Good afternoon and welcome to Grain TV. It's December 27, 2012. To my left is Logan Burgess and I'm Brock Shimbino. We saw a low volume trade today in Chicago. Let's turn over to fire tip to see what happened. Corn was down one and a quarter cents. Soybeans off five and a quarter. Wheat in Chicago down two and a half and Kansas City was off one and three quarters. You know, as we head towards the end of the year here, Logan, I think we're going to see some low volume, uh, some position evening, some profit taking before we end up the year here in a couple days. Yeah. Um, but really, soybeans had a two-sided trade. We saw them positive early on the session. We saw it turn negative later on. Uh, you know, what, what was kind of the, the driving force there? Yeah, you know, soybeans was taking a good bounce here early in the session, Brock. We saw that January contract trading up eight or ten cents uh, in the early going. Uh, at that time, we did see the deferred months lagging behind the, the front January contract there. It seems like continued uh, good news out of South America in terms of in terms of precipitation has been weighing on those contracts if you look out August 13 and beyond uh, but front month contracts w really were finding some strength here it seemed like though at midday uh, some more macro concerns conversations about the fiscal cliff uh, started to weigh on this grain market here uh, a lot of red on the board today uh, as we were mentioning and we had Harry Reid come out today and say that in his opinion he does not see a resolution coming down the line here is that a huge surprise to the market for people that have been watching this no, I really don't think it is, but it's confirmation of it. Anytime you have Harry Reid come out and say that, it certainly does put a negative tone on market action. It seemed like, you know, whether we like it or not, that did spill over into the grain market here today. You know, I think uh, a lot of the uncertainty about the fiscal cliff and the economic uncertainty about next year, what's going to happen, right. you know, I think that was weighing on the outside markets. We saw the Dow Jones off pretty sharply uh, right. as we headed towards the end of the session here today. And we saw the livestock markets down as well. Crude oil was off a little bit. Um, you know, I think really uh, this all came over and flowed into the, the other commodities, corn, soybeans, and wheat. Um, you know, this morning we also had a little bit of downside pressure at Lend, uh, lent by uh, what Taiwan had to come right. out and say. Uh, their sugar corporation actually uh, did not make any purchases on their tender for 23,000 metric tons of corn, 12,000 metric tons of soybeans. You know, they cited too high of prices right now in the United States for them to be purchasing. So that's kind of negative, especially f as far as uh, export sales are concerned. Um, tomorrow we do get the export sales report. Right. Uh, what are the expectations for tomorrow? Yeah, Brock, for, uh, for wheat, we're expecting between, or I guess the trade's expecting between 500 and 700,000 uh, metric tons reported there of U.S. wheat. For corn, 150 to 300,000 metric tons. And for beans, 100 to 300,000 metric tons. You know, if uh, you've been watching us here for a while, we've been port reporting on this export sales figure for beans that's quite a bit lower than what we've seen in recent weeks and that's a result of those cancellations from the Chinese that we saw last week uh, and those on net were about 500,000 metric tons so certainly a big dent there in the weekly number the thing though about this is that once we have uh, those cancellations kind of behind us here I think that beans in particular are going to be able to start focusing back on the fundamentals um, here in the coming weeks as we approach the quarterly grain stocks report and the January WASU report you know Brock the, the one thing I think that people should keep in mind is although um, we did see those cancellations, soybeans has been moving lower. Right now we're about uh, 208 million bushels ahead of pace to meet USDA expectations according to our model. So I think it's good to keep in mind the big picture here on beans. Certainly a much different story than corn right now. Fundamentally this bean market uh, still remains strong. We will have to see though what the USDA comes out with uh, in the quarterly grain stocks and the January Rawazi. You know in, in corn we are running quite a bit behind a uh, pace. Our expectations or inspections right. uh, this year is actually about 78 million bushels behind pace. So we are running well behind pace on corn. Um, that's going to be have to be addressed in the January report. You know, something else we get on uh, yeah. F or tomorrow for corn demand is ethanol numbers from the EIA. We also get that tomorrow. That's going to be yep. delayed, just like uh, export sales. Right. So tomorrow we do get a little bit of fundamental news from the ethanol industry and from export sales. So that's something we'll have to pay attention to for tomorrow. Yeah, you know, in coming weeks here, according to our model, ethanol production has been behind pace to meet USDA expectations. Corn uh, export sales have been behind pace, but the one big thing we're going to be keeping an eye on in that quarterly grain stocks report is the feed number. That's kind of the wild card. Uh, in this corn market right here that could uh, give things a little bit of a bump. But we'll keep you posted on all the expectations uh, for those two big reports here uh, as we move toward them. You know, Brock, I think though that kind of wraps up what we saw today in the grain market here on Grain TV. Thanks a lot for joining us here on a Thursday afternoon, guys. Have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow.